you can address yourself. I'm Bill Miller, an artistic director here at the Arts Club Theatre Company, and I'm just going to get everything done. It already seems like a loving event. We're all just cool and calm, and we're just anything will flow. People are arriving, people are sitting down. Anyway, <laughs> of course I've known Lumbee a long time. Um, I first uh, met her uh, at the Arts Club, uh, Seymour Street Bar, uh, downstairs there in the club, I think in the 1970s when I started to work at the Arts Club. And uh, she performed from time to time, and I just thought, this is a marvelous, wonderful, wonderful woman. And so when I you know, heard about uh, Lovey passing and, and uh, started asking people what, what they might have said if they were asked, what, what, what are your memories of Lovey? And words just flooded, things like uh, warm and uh, uh, kind and generous, that big smile, the, the uh, embrace, uh, feisty was a word, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, a woman who knew what she wanted and knew how to get it. She knew uh, where she was in the universe and um, her eyes. Remember her eyes? Oh, yes. I had those eyes. Bobby always knew where the fall spot was. She'd look up and there it was. <laughs> of course, um, uh, my greatest memory of Bobby, of course, is in uh, Amos Behaven, which we produced next door in the review stage uh, starting in 1984. Uh, and um, when I first thought about doing A Miss Maven, I really wondered how would we ever cast it? Now think back to 1984. And um, Boo Mancuma came to mind. Um, Dennis Simpson came to mind, but he was in Toronto at the time. Um, Ralph, of course, uh, he was in Victoria. Uh, and Lovey. And I said to Dean Regan, who is the director of the show, I think you should see this lovely Eli. And right away she uh, swung her hips and she <laughs> cackled her laugh, uh, and he cast her right away. And then uh, we were fortunate that Sybil Thrasher was in town with, uh, with a group she was touring with, and we went, Sybil, come on, move to Vancouver. <laughs> uh, and of course, the young Lavina Fox. Yes. Uh, and there we had these incredible five, Ralph Cole and, and uh, the rest of them, just uh, an amazing, amazing group. And little did we know that we had lit uh, a candle that would burn for a long, long time with that show. Uh, it ran over two years at the review stage, and then we toured it, we remounted it, it was on this stage. Uh, and then the final production we did um, that Lovey was in was at the Stanley Theatre in the early 2000s. So, they had a long run. And you know, those ladies, Sybil, Lovey, and Lavina, they stuck through practically the whole run. Blue, I think you packed it in early, right? You, were, <laughs> you had a movie career to worry about. TV career. Um, and so we replaced him. Um, uh, lots of great people got involved. Uh, Marcus, I see Marcus there, and Alvin, I think. Alvin Sanders is in the audience. And, uh, and of course, Dennis came in, replaced Ralph. Uh, but I don't, think, I don't think ever we really, in a sense, recreated that magic of that opening night with those five originals. Anyways, those three women were incredible. You know, Lovey had, uh, Lovey and Sybil, Sybil can correct me if I'm wrong, um, they had a drink they called apple juice. <laughs> You're right. And one day the stage manager tasted the apple juice. He was never the same since. Um, Karen Fair was the stage manager of the show very well into the run, probably towards the second year or whatever. And she told me a story um, that I want to relate to that to me in some ways typifies the um, wonderful woman that, that Lovey was. Uh, in that kind of setting, that theatrical setting. I mean, she, I don't think she ever set out to be a stage performer. I mean, she was a singer and, and dancer. Uh, but anyways, um, I don't know if, how well you know Amos Maven, but uh, partway through Act One, 
there, there's a song that that uh, uh, says I'm God. I gotta get, make sure I got the right oh, lyric right. because otherwise the story doesn't make any sense. I think Sybil's already telling the story to somebody. <laughs> I can tell her. Um, uh, anyways, it's called uh, I've Got a Feeling I'm Falling. Yes. And uh, there you go. And um, Lovey was crossing from upstage left to downstage right, and in this tiny. I don't know if you know the review stage. It was a cabaret at the time, and there were tables. Uh, people would drink. It was it was licensed, and so they were drinking right in the front row, like right there, uh, closer than you are in the front row. And um, and so Lovey was crossing from upstage to downstage, right? And she must have got blinded by the fall spot or something. And just as she was saying the lyric, I've got a feeling I'm. She fell right in <laughs> to the front row. And of course, the drinks went um, flying, and she got herself right up, hopped right back on stage, gave a wink to this uh, rather distraught couple <laughs> who saw their uh, drinks destroyed, uh, and carried right on. Well, of course, that proved to be the uh, gift to the audience from Lovey, and Lovey enjoyed the rest of the show because they kept waiting for her to fall right back <laughs> into the audience again. She never did. Uh, you know, in thank you, Sybil. Um, you know, and, and, and also one of the things I remember about Lovey, and she had a song called um, "Trash for Your Cash." She could never get the lyrics right. She was always mang mangling them, and didn't matter. She got through the number. She had that way with her. Uh, but in the second act, she had a song called "Mean to Me," uh, a really sort of standard torch song of the era. Uh, you know, the 1930s. Uh, when Fats Waller, of course, was um, writing a lot of these tunes. I don't know if he wrote that particular one, but uh, made it well known. And um, she was downstage left, actually, right about where I am, but next door. Uh, she sat down, it was right after the Reefer song, so right after Dennis or Ralph or whatever had spent like 10 minutes buzzing the audience. Um, and then suddenly it was quiet, and she just sat, she didn't move. And as I say, the light uh, hit her eyes uh, and sang the song in an extraordinary way um, that uh, literally stopped the show. Yes. Um, and for that moment, I think people really understood what it was to be in a room. I mean, it only sat about 200, but to be in a room in the presence of somebody who could communicate that strongly, uh, that emotion, um, that sadness, and that... Uh, uh, what that was to her. I never asked her, um, really, was it a life experience that she was referring to in that way that actors recreate something um, from their emotional past, uh, but it was a moment that, uh, that clearly uh, I treasured. Love me, of course, did a lot of other shows, Black and Gold Review, I think she did both of them, and, and uh, Blues in the Night, and was just a real, uh, a real standard bearer for us, um, along with Sybil and Levine and a lot of other people that performed on our stages. And um, I was always so thankful and, and of her generosity and her spirit and her amazing professionalism. Um, I mean, despite the, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the juice. Um, <laughs> but you always gave an incredible performance. And I think that's why the show ran as long as it did in Vancouver. Uh, very unusual for a show to run, uh, run that long. And somebody says, still remains one of the longest running musicals because of the t number of times that we repeated it or toured or, or whatever. So anyways, it, it's, um, I'm sure all of you have many, many memories. I'm going to miss that great, sweet, she was sweet, she was in the end, very sweet, loving, um, generous person. So to carry on, I'd like to invite the Gospel Experience to come on stage and uh, help us send Lovey into a world where I'm sure she's still trying to remember the lyrics of Trash for Your Cash. <laughs> Thank you.
She was fine with me, but really hard on the drummers. <laughs> the drummers were scared to work with her, except Doris Maxwell, uh, AKA Ted Lewis, uh, uh, who she loved working with. I worked with Lovey on and off for years. Smiling Buddha, Shanghai Junk, New Delhi, etc. Later on, Lovey gave up dancing to become a professional singer actress. To me, she was a cross between Esther Phillips and Diana Washington. To this day, my favorite songs that Lovey sang were Love Won't Let Me Wait, The Masquerade, and Mr. Magic. What I liked about working with Lovey was, while demanding, she was very focused. She made the band work harder, sound better, and definitely kept us on our toes. The last time I played with Lovey was at the Elegant Parlor reunion six years ago. It was a treat to see her face light up when the band started playing and to hear her sing again like the old days. In conclusion, Lovey, I know you'll be up there with St. Peter, torturing the drummers to learn their drum songs. <laughs> <laughs> Lovey, continue being the bright light that you are. We love and miss you. Henry. Uh -huh. And now I have a few words. Uh, actually, Rick, and, and by the way, uh, can we have a big hug for Rick? had a, a lifetime of happiness together, and uh, yeah, we're all here to hug you, Rick. We're all here for you. Uh, he found a little piece of paper that Ralph Cole had written some words to Lovey many, many years ago. We found it in their box with some pictures or something that had been around for a long, long time, so he wanted me to just read this from Ralph Cole. Rick found this message to Lovey from Ralph Cole. Love is heavy. She must have been born that way. Lovey is beyond trying to be somebody. Lovey just is. Experienced, knowledgeable, graceful, alive. Lovey is a mystical charm out of the past. Enchantingly beautiful. Lovey is forever. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. And now, would you please welcome to the stage Michael Benson and Doug Louis. It's a sacrifice 
Lord have mercy with her children. Mm -hmm. There were decades of wonderful times hearing her sing gospel in the St. Clair Singers, Circle of Voices, and the Gospel Experience. She was a great cook known for her amazing barbecue ribs. Now see, that's what I knew would happen. Y'all had the ribs. <laughs> <laughs> You'll always remember that. <laughs> that girl cooked and grace. Don't get me started. <laughs> In the early days, musicians and singers would go to Lovey's house after gigs as they knew Lovey would be cooking up some good food. Good old soul food, that's good lady. Ronnie Small would be the first one there. <laughs> and he was a very close friend and knew good food when he saw it. Yes, he thought. She had the perfect name, too, as to know her was to love her. She was kind-hearted, outgoing, and always had that great, big, old, beautiful smile. But she could be tough, and didn't take no stuff. <laughs> Not to see her. Don't be bringing no stuff around here. <laughs> <laughs> Lovey had done so much in her lifetime and is part of Vancouver's entertainment history. She has a star on the Walk of Fame outside of the Orpheum Theater for her countless performances in Ain't This the Haven. such a beautiful life together and uh, this is typical of their beautiful union. Some of the little things that made Lovey happy were for years she would spend hours joyfully reading stories to children in the tent at the PNE. She'd watch and listen from her window the children playing at the park right in front of her home and would go out and tend to any child crying or having troubles, then that's sweet. Never miss watching the soap operas every day. <laughs> and the price is right. <laughs> she loved going to bingo, either on her own or with a good buddy Marcus Mose. <laughs> in later years, she and Rick would go to the beach for walks hand in hand and just laugh and laugh and laugh, enjoying being together. She had one of the best laughs in the universe. <laughs> Lovey Eli was an extraordinary, one of a kind, beautiful soul. We will all miss her forever, and she will be forever in our hearts because Lovey Eli is forever. Yes. Amen. Now let me welcome to the stage Megan Clark. to when she went to bed at night was perfect and cared for 
It took me a while to gain your trust, sir. <laughs> but I did, and Lovey had some unique needs. Closer to the end, um, again, as anyone who's had an experience with a dementia knows, the soul stays hidden behind our eyes. But the disease is of the person, and not of who you are. It takes our body, and it takes our mind, but it doesn't take your soul. So, with all due respect to the wonderful performers here, Lovey and I had a little connection. I myself grew up in musical theater. So when she really needed it, I found the music that she loved, and we'd find a quiet place, and I would sing to her as best I could. And after a while, that would come to be the best calming time for her, the time she looked forward to when she was most at peace, most herself. And I have two stories to share with you today. One about me, one about Rick. <laughs> the first one's about me. After a while, I did my best to sing the stuff that she wanted to hear as best I could. And after a while, even with the dementia, you get to know each other. Because again, the soul always exists no matter what the dementia is doing to our this life body. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And as you know, Music is the thing that always keeps us connected. So after a while, Lovey and I had a connection. She knew it was me there. She didn't know my name. Those things, that didn't matter. She knew I was there to sing with her. And every so often in a dementia, something can wake you up, especially something that matters to you like music did with Lovey. She woke up, she turned at me, she smacked me on my cheek and she said, baby, you're better than that. <laughs> and I said, you're right, Mom, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> no. No. So a little while later, after Lovey and I had this connection together, Rick came to visit. And I hope you remember this moment, Rick. And I wanted to show him what we were doing to make sure that he knew when he went to bed at night, when all of you went to bed at night. But she was well cared for, and that was important to us. So I sat with Rick and Lovey a while. I sang some songs that we sang a lot, and I sang a lot to her. And for about 30 seconds, she woke up there. And she said, Rick, oh, I love you, baby. Aww. She knew him in that moment. Yeah. So as the dementia took Lovey's brain, body, all the stuff that doesn't matter, and we recycle it in the end anyway. Mm -hmm. We made sure she was surrounded by all the things that she loved. From the food, the sounds, the smells, the creams, everything she needed. And in the end, she left surrounded by tunes that she loved, and aromatherapy, but she simply went to sleep. So I'm here to promise all of you that knew Lovey, this Lovey, and we made sure she stayed lovely till the very last minute. She was surrounded by all the things she loved about her and everything that she loved. And he made sure that. Yeah. yeah. sort of took me under her wing in the ways that she can do. She's like, 
Come on, baby, we can do this. <laughs> when I would be nervous and scared or whatever or unsure of myself, let me just always have that smile and that knowing look like, you can do this. Yeah. And we moved on. Yeah. I'd like for you to join me. I, um, I have something I want to read. It's from the program. Have a moment of, of silence. What I'd like for you to do, if you would indulge me, is as people have shared these wonderful memories and moments with Lovey, I'd like for you to think through the one, just one moment that you've had with her, or the, a, a, a memory of her, a picture of her in your mind, and just hold it there and be there with her in this moment of silence. And then I want to read just a small piece for you. So please, just a moment. We are spirit having a human experience. Death is nothing at all. It does not count. I have only slipped away into the next room. Nothing has happened. Everything remains exactly as it was. I am I, and you are you. And the old life that we live so fondly together is untouched, unchanged. Whatever we were to each other, we are still. Call me by the old familiar name. Speak of me in the easy way which you always used. Put no difference in your tone. Wear no forced air of solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we always laughed at the jokes, those little jokes we enjoyed together. Play, smile, think of me. Pray for me. Let my name be ever the household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without an effort, without the ghost of a shadow upon it. Life means all that it ever meant. It is the same as it ever was. There is absolute and unbroken continuity. What is this death but negligible accident? Why should I be out of mind simply because I am out of sight? <laughs> I am but waiting for you for an interval. Somewhere nearby, just around the corner. All is well. story about when I first uh, arrived in Vancouver. Uh, it was late 60s and I had an occasion to go to my first concert in Vancouver and it was at Malcolm Bowl and it was outdoors in the sunshine. And uh, on stage this beautiful sister, very tall, with her keyboards, sat down did a few numbers and then she proceeded to do a song a cappella that is the number she's going to do for you now the hairs on the back of my neck stood up thank you i changed my life because I, I ain't heard nothing that beautiful ever before you're about to experience it now ladies and gentlemen the beautiful it's really supremely talented, Miss B.
First, I want to say it's uh, uh, an honor to be here to celebrate Lovey's life um, and to celebrate it with all of you. I got to sing so I don't cry. Okay, so I love you know I love to talk, but I got to cut it short and, and do this in honor of Lovey and Burbank. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a man I have heard of once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue. In the dreams that I dare dream of, really, really do. Someday I wish upon a star and to wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops way up of the chimney tops. That's where
you. Beautiful view. Eli's in the building, y'all best believe. Yeah. Thank y'all so very much. That's just gorgeous. And now, would you please welcome to the stage, once again, the beautiful Lavina Fox and the very, very lovely Sybil Thrasher.
What you mean? 
with you. I had the honor of meeting Miss Lovey Eli when I was 14. My uncle took me to the club. Yes, I was underage. Didn't matter. <laughs> All I seen was her spirit. She was so feisty. Still is. She still is because she came to say goodbye to me in my dream and says, You better learn these, learn these words. <laughs> yes. Okay. So just in case I forgot, I wrote one down. Neither is playing to me. Jesus, I 
experiences I have had with Lovey, and I think most of all she was a teacher. Mm. She taught us by example what it meant to be committed, to live in a good way. So the prayer I am going to share with you is about gratitude for what she shared. creator of all things. We thank you for the opportunity to experience lovey in our lives. We thank you for her being an example of possibilities. For sharing in a way that touched our hearts, made us pay attention made us want to be better. We thank you for her journey here on this, this physical world because she shared herself with so many people. I'm selfish. Blessed by her presence. We thank you for the gift of Rick in her life. Made her shine and live the love in her heart. It's rare that we experience people who give us inspiration. We thank you for sharing her gift of her voice her words sometimes stir, but for a reason. We thank you for the gift of lovely Eli. And 
And I would ask that each of you remember this evening, remember the love that is filling in this room. Take it with you. Share it. Be an example of possibilities.
loving in the by and by. I'm going to let it shine. I'm still going to be with loving in the by and by. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to be with loving in the by and by. backstage lounge if you can speak around. Uh, we have Doug Louie's trio playing back there. If anybody wants to sing a song, get up and share a memory, or just mingle with good friends. So thank you. God bless you. Join us in the backstage lounge. 